so the first speaker is uh, Paul Fields, who's a postdoc in Chuck Murray Lab, and he'll talk about nuclear architecture dynamics during cardiogenesis. Okay. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, Brock, this is working, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. It is bright and early out on the West Coast here. So uh, I am appreciative of this opportunity to get to present some of the work we've been doing here at the University of Washington as part of our Center for Nuclear Organization and in general as part of the bigger 40N project. And so the work in the Murray Lab really focused on di defining the dynamics of nuclear architecture during human cardiogenesis. There we go. Um, and so for by way of background, um, the Murray Lab is really interested in understanding the mechanisms and basis of human um, heart development and heart disease. And cardiovascular disease is a huge issue for uh, morbidity and mortality worldwide. And in fact, congenital heart disease is the most common cause of developmental defects and a leading cause of infant mortality. And many of these uh, congenital heart diseases are caused by um, mutations in transcription factors, suggesting the important element of transcriptional regulation in the regulation of heart development, and specifically in various formational pathways as the heart forms. And the heart, in fact, is the first or fully functional organ to form in the developing embryo. And so in our lab, we use uh, embryonic stem cell differentiation and or induced pluripotent stem cell differentiation over a 14-day time course to look at how the cells transition from an undifferentiated pluripotent state to a definitive cardiomyocyte. And so they start out as a single small colony of the pluripotent stem cell. And over two weeks, as we initially modulate the width signaling pathway and later add specific growth factors, we drive it into a monolayer of beating cardiomyocytes. And we can see that here, where on the left, we have the pluripotent stem cell state. And after 14 days, we have a fully beating sheet of cardiomyocytes. And this comes out to produce a highly pure population of greater than 90% cardios. And so our interest in epigenetic regulation of this process really got started about six years ago now, where we looked at a various different epigenetic marks during the same sort of differentiation pathway and noticed that different um, classes of cardiac genes were regulated differently where regulator genes, in particular transcription factors, started out in bivalent states before becoming upregulated during the differentiation, where more structural proteins were largely unmarked as embryonic stem cells before becoming activated at the later stages. And so the goal of this project was really to take advantage of some of the newer technologies that have emerged over the last two or three years to really look at how this process has been changing. And so the work I'm going to be talking about today is using human pluripotent stem cells to model heart development and looking at these four time points along the way. The initial embryonic stem cell state, an early mesoderm state about two days after the stem cell when we've activated the width signaling pathway, a cardiac progenitor stage, which comes after we then inhibit width pathway, and then a definitive cardiomyocyte at 14 days. And looking at the crosstalk between genome architecture as measured by DNA high C, gene expression by RNA seq, and local accessibility via tax seq. And given the time constraints of this short presentation, I'm only going to be able to highlight a few of the key takeaways from this study so far, but I would point people if they're more interested that we do have a preprint pre available on BioArchive that goes into more detail of some of the things I will talk about today. And so after performing DNA high C, even at the map, and I'm not going to spend much time on introducing, introducing high C to this audience, as I imagine most people are familiar since this is a 40N webinar. So even at the most basic level, just looking at a whole chromosome, um, we see dynamic regulation in the high C contact maps over differentiation, where as we go from ESL to mesoderm to cardiac progenitor to cardiomyocyte, even at this macro level, I can point out highlight regions that are dynamic during this process. 
And I'm going to come back to actually what the specific region happened to be later in the talk. And so we can also see this even more so when we look at the delta values for this difference, where early on a lot of the changes up and down occur right on in the local environment. But as we compare further and further different time points, we start seeing more and more long range differences emerging. And so for the first part, I'm going to talk about what we observed when we looked at it at sort of the higher level compartmentalization calls and looking at the A, B compartments across differentiation. And I do have some work on TAD analyses as well um, that I had to take out for uh, time constraints. So when we look at the A, B compartment calls across differentiation, where we have ESL, mesoderm, cardiac progenitor, and cardiomyocytes, and we were also able to include a couple of human fetal heart samples, we're able to see that we plot the PCA um, components of the AB calls, um, we can see that PC1, which represents the largest amount of variance, seems to de represent a differentiation time course where the cardiomyocytes are at a similar level of the fetal, whereas the y-axis seems to separate out more by cardiomyocyte purity because the fetal samples also will include um, fibroblasts, endothelial cells, and other cells of the fetal heart. And as we can highlight on the right here, um, there are, while largely the patterns are similar, we can highlight regions that are transitioning more A to B, as well as regions that are transitioning from more B to A over the differentiation time course. And when we look at this genome wide, we see that while about 80% of the genome is stable, we see about 20% that are dynamically switching between A-B compartment calls, the majority of which are in a monodirectional pathway whereas we do see a few that are going either A to B to A or going B to A to B. And we can highlight those regions here just by looking at it on a heat map where we can see sort of the transitioning from B to A or those regions that are starting out in A and ending up more in B. And when we look at this genome-wide, one thing I noticed was that many of these long-range contacts that were gaining enrichment were specifically regions that were B compartment during the differentiation. And we could quantify this genome-wide. We looked at cis interaction scores and looked at the median value for either interactions between AA compartments, AB compartments, or BB compartments, and seeing a shift in the enrichment between a preference in the earlier states where a stronger cis interaction between AA Whereas over differentiation, we see a stronger interaction with BB. And this is also true in the fetal heart. In contrast, when trans uh, contacts between different chromosomes, there doesn't seem to be a strong enrichment in heterochromatic B regions, whereas there is a preference for AA interactions during different uh, in trans. So how do these relate to gene expression? So we did the same time points, and we did RNA-seq. And the PCA of the RNA-seq shows a very similar uh, plotting to the high c data, where we have one axis representing differentiation and one axis representing cardiomyocyte purity. However, in contrast to the high c data, we see much more time point-specific expression from the RNA-seq, where we'll see patterns of enrichment in the cardiac progenitor stage, in the mesoderm stage, or in the cardiomyocyte stage, um, in contrast to the more uh, unidirectional pattern that we observed with the high C data. When we overlap these two data sets and we look at the differentially regulated genes and group them by their stage of peak expression, so these are genes that are dynamic between various time points and then subdivided by whether their peak expression is ESL, mesoderm, cardiac progenitor, or cardiomyocyte. We can see that in those regions that are stable, there isn't a clear pattern in enrichment of observed genes versus the overall gene density. In contrast, those regions that are transitioning from B to A are highly enriched for regions that are up or genes that are upregulated in cardiomyocyte, and specifically heart development, muscle development, genes that we would expect to be upregulated in this process. Interestingly, while I don't have time to talk about it, we actually do see a strong enrichment for cardiac progenitor highly expressed genes in regions that go from B to A to B, 
which suggests that these uh, two-step dynamic regions may be of biological significance. And I will just highlight one gene here, which is the cardiac structural gene alpha actin and 2, where we can see it's a region that's transitioning from B to A in both cardiomyocytes and fetal, coincident with when it becomes highly expressed in those stages. So that is sort of looking at a brief preview of some of the work we've done on highlighting how high seed data overlaps with RNA-seq. And so to address the question of local accessibility, we performed a taxi at these various stages as well. And similar to data we had seen in previous uh, study on DNA hypersensitivity sites, we see a strong enrichment for a greater number of accessible regions in the early stages in ESL and mesoderm, as well as many stages, many peaks that are constitutively open during all four stages of differentiation. And then we have fewer peaks that are specific to um, uh, cardiac progenitor and cardiomyocytes. And very similar, and then when we look at where these fall across the genome, we see a specifically divergence where in ESL, if you look at all the, the stage-specific peaks in ESL, they're split about 50-50 in A compartment and B compartment. But as we differentiate, we see a, a bifurcation where we see more of a higher fraction of peaks falling in the A compartment relative to the B. And this is uh, irrespective of the fact that in all four stages, the genome is about split 50% in A compartment and 50% in B compartment. So this fits kind of with the high C data we saw where the compaction, the greater increase in signal occurred between BB compartment over differentiation. And so these two pieces, along with other data that I don't have as much time to present today, suggest that over differentiation, we see a packing down of the B compartment, the heterochromatic regions during differentiation, whereas the difference between the A and the B regions are less in the ESL state, which is a more hyperdynamic chromatin. And so, in support of that, and similar to uh, the RNA-seq data, um, I'm plotting the same sort of uh, observed over expected of, a, of attack seq peaks, looking at the expected distribution of all attack peaks we see versus stage-specific ones, ones that are only seen in a very uh, specific time point. And what we see is similar to the RNA data is a decrease or a depletion in those that are regions that transition from A to B, and an enrichment in those that go from B to A. But in contrast to the RNA-C, we do see patterns in the all A and the all B, where in the ESL, we see an over-enrichment from what we'd expect in the B compartment and a depletion in the cardiomyocyte stage and the reverse in those that are in all A compartment. Um, and so that's sort of just like a preview of how um, we view those four, three different um, aspects of the genome talking to each other and building this picture where the chromatin looks like this in the ESL state, where we've got um, regions in B, regions in A, and I'll highlight this region that I will have uh, moving from B to A. And so let's see if this plays. Over differentiation, we see the B regions pack down, the A regions open up, um, as well as some regions that are dynamic from B to A. And data that I didn't have time to show today suggests that actually, similar to what I showed here, is that we see CAD boundaries specifically lost in regions that are B, that are packing down more tightly during differentiation, suggesting that neighboring regions that might have been held separate an ESL state might pack down into larger heterochromatic foci during differentiation. Um, and so after looking at this from a global perspective, we were asking, we asked the question, what is unique about the genes that are regulated in their nuclear position? What is special about those genes that are going from B to A compartment? And one thing we noticed right off the bat was not only are they enriched in heart development genes, they were also strikingly larger um, and that there were fewer genes in these regions from B to A. And so 
One hypothesis is that this may be a way of regulating these large developmental genes that are not needed in the EF cell state, but might be needed to be activated in specific lineages during differentiation. Whereas some of these other genes that are upregulated are more general differentiation metabolism genes, whereas those that are in the regions that go from B to A are largely heart development genes. And we can actually see this when we looked at um, data from uh, the gene tissue expression database and looked at where uh, these genes are expressed in the various tissues of an adult human, where one represents that the highest expressed tissue for that gene is the heart, and 37 is the lowest expressed uh, gene is the heart. We see a shift to the left in this plot of those genes that are upregulated and in regions that transition in B to A, in contrast to those regions that are genes that are upregulated, but in other regions of the genome, suggesting higher enrichment in the heart of those genes that are in the B to A regions. And so one gene that's been out our lab is particularly interested in is Titan, which while being a gene size of only about 250 um, megabases, this is one of the largest, uh, or 250 kilobases, this is one of the largest proteins in the human body and an essential protein for forming sarcomere structures in the cardiomyocyte. And coming back to that figure I showed very early on, it turned out that the titan locus was actually right on this boundary that during the differentiation, it transitions from um, B compartment to A compartment. And I just plotted that against its uh, FPM values here, um, along with looking at the attack seq and RNA seq here, where we see an upregulated expression during differentiation coincident with a attack peak becoming accessible right at the promoter, and then another attack peak becoming accessible on a known internal promoter right here. Interestingly, we see three attack peaks that decrease during differentiation that are all um, overlapping known ENCODE CTCF peaks from embryonic stem cells. And what we think is that there's actually a packing down of titan in the embryonic stem cell state that opens up during differentiation as it transitions from B to A. And I can animate that here, where our potential model is that it's packed down in ES cell and opens up during differentiation. And one cool thing that we can do with high C data is sort of put all this together and empirically model the structure of chromosome two using the algorithm developed by the Noble Lab here at the University of Washington. And so what I've done here is just animated the transitions between the four states in chromosome two. And what we have in red are the um, A region and B the blue and gray marks regions that are on the boundaries between A and B. And this green spot is the titan locus. And so during differentiation, and I'll rotate through the ES cell first here, it's gonna, the A regions in red are gonna stretch out and you can follow the green dot as it moves from blue to A, and the A regions are going to open up as the B regions are going to pack down. And so in summary, what we put together here is a comprehensive look at how high c attack seq and RNA-seq vary together and independently across multiple time points of lineage commitment, and changes at both local and chromatin organization um, feedback on each other and correlate and occur coincident with gene regulation. And then in particular, large developmental regulators are sequestered in B compartment and transition upon A activation to A, um, including the key cardiac protein titan. So this work is a part of the University of Washington CNOF uh, Center for Nuclear Organization and couldn't be, have been done without the collaboration of multiple groups here, including many people from the Murray Lab that I would like to thank, including my advisor, Chuck, and in particular, help from Alessandro and Katie, and then collaborations with the Shinduri Lab and the Novo Lab, and this work is supported by our um, uh, 40N grant, as well as, as well as work from the T32, um, support for the T32 for myself. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to take any questions.